This video is about how to write linear equations in slope-intercept form when they're given in some other form first. So the first example is when it was given in standard form. And standard form, once again, is ax plus by equals c. These are all integers, and a is a positive integer. So you can see that these are all integers, and um, a is positive. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get into slope-intercept form. Once again, that is y equals mx plus b. So we, what I like to do is I ask myself, like, hmm, is y by itself? No, it's not. It's got, you know, this x that I need to deal with. So I'm going to, in order to get rid of that, I'm going to subtract by 3x to both sides. I'm going to offset it a little bit on the other side because I don't want to put it right below and think I'm going 6 minus 3x because these are different these are not like terms, so I'm going to put them off from each other. So 3x minus 3x is 0. Make sure you don't lose that negative sign, so that's a common mistake. Negative 2y equals. I'm going to use the commutative property here, which allows me to go 6 minus 3x is the same as negative 3x plus 6, just so that I start getting more into this slope-intercept form, where it's x first and then a constant later. And then I look at this and I'm like, hmm, y is still not by itself. It's got this negative 2 in front. And if you remember, it's negative 2 times y. So I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is negative 2 divided by. And I, if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the whole side. So I'm going to do it to this whole side. So here, negative 2 over negative 2 is 1. So that's just a giant 1, y equals. Now I'm going to decompose this number, which means I'm going to break it into its component park parts. So this is negative 3x over negative 2 and 6 over negative 2. And then I'm going to simplify those fractions um, individually. So y equals negative over negative is a positive 3 over 2x. And the nice thing about algebra is Keeping things as fractions is fine, even keeping them as improper fractions is fine. Because once again, that's the rise over run or the change in y over change in x. So it's going to make it easy if you keep it in that form in order to graph. And then I can see a plus and a minus here. Um, so that is going to be like positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So this is in slope intercept form. Okay, the second problem is a form that we haven't really looked at in class so much. It's called the point slope form. Oopsie daisy. Okay, um, point slope form. And basically, if you look, if you recall just the equation for the slope, m equals uh, change in y over change in x. Um, and instead of putting a y1, y2, I just, you know, labeled it as point x, y, and point um like the first point, like x1, y1. Um, I can kind of multiply both sides. By x minus, if I do this, x minus x minus 1 and do it to this other side, x minus x minus 1. This whole thing here cancels. And so I'm left with this equation here. m times x minus 1 x minus, ugh, it's like a tongue twister tonight. m times x minus x sub 1 equals y minus y sub 1. Sorry, the sides are flipped over there. Promise me, I promise you it's the same thing. So this here is called the point slope form. So, um, so that's kind of the same thing, but instead of like numbers in here that we would have plugged in to find the slope, we just left the x and y variables in there. So I look at this and I'm like, hmm, is this in, you know, I'm trying to get to slope intercept form. And I can see that, well, I've got the y almost by itself. I just need to get rid of this minus 3. But before I do that, I look at this other side. I'm like, ooh, I got parentheses. So I should really try to get rid of those first. So I'm going to use the distributive property first. So I'm just going to write the left side just as it is. And then I'm going to use the distributive property, 2x and 2 times positive 5 is 10. Now I'm going to try to get the y by itself. And in order to get rid of the minus 3, I'm going to add 3 to both sides, put it under the term that it is similar to, the plus 10. y, this cancels out, equals 2x 
plus 13. Okay, so there you have it. So once again, think about how do you get the y by itself? What are you going to need to do? Are you adding, subtracting? Um, if you have parentheses on one side, make sure you get rid of those first before you do anything. Otherwise, it gets a little bit kind of funky. Okay, good luck with that.